morning, Mets fans, and happy Monday. It is February 12th. It's been a while since I have been recording, uh, since I was able to record a video, but welcome to Driving with Mr. Met. Uh, it's been over a week, and boy, a lot has happened since the last time I recorded. I was away last week and wasn't able to get a video recorded, so uh, I want to try to get caught up, um, touch on the few things that uh, have happened since the last time we talked and uh, preview the week to come, which includes the official beginning of spring training. After all of the, the craziness that was and continues to be the free agent market uh, in uh, up leading into the 2018 season, uh, the Mets have finally made a big move and uh, acquired Todd Frazier, um, to, uh, as I get my low battery notice on my phone, um, Todd Frazier to play third base, um, on an extremely, extremely team-friendly contract. Two years, uh, 19 million, that's, or 18 million, no, 19, it was 19. Um, that's eight and a half million dollars a year, or nine and a half, whatever it was, it's, or 17 million, sorry, geez. See, I'm out of practice, it's been forever. Two years, seventeen million, eight and a half million dollars a year for a guy like Todd Frazier, who's an all-star, who's a slugger, who's a very good defensive third baseman, uh, who adds some right-handed power to the Mets lineup. I think this is a fantastic signing. Uh, of the options that were available, um, I think this is the best choice, considering the length of the contract and the dollars associated with it. I think the Mets could have done a lot worse. This is a, a definitely a better acquisition than Eduardo Nunez would have been. Uh, and it's certainly fewer years than the Mets would have had to commit to Mike Moustakis. Um, I, I, Moustakis was the guy that I wanted. But I have to tip my cap to Brian Ernie, who uh, for the last like two months, if you watch Orange and Blue thing, uh, has been clamoring about getting Frazier, getting Frazier, getting Frazier. He wrote a really good piece uh, on the Seven Line blog, um, sort of comparing the players side by side, and he focused more on um, Frazier versus Nunez. And if you look outside of the batting average, which, oh, you know, Frazier's not going to bat higher than 230, 235 maybe, but his peripheral numbers, his other numbers are fantastic. Good on base percentage, high slugging percentage, and the defense cannot be, um, cannot be made more important. I think Frazier's defense is, is the selling point for me. Um, the fact that he's not quite a gold glove caliber third baseman, but a very, very good defensive third baseman. I mean, the Mets haven't had really since, since David Wright in like 2007 when he won the gold glove. Um, but it's nice to have uh, the infield completely locked up right now as we head into spring training. Third base is spoken for, shortstop is spoken for, second base now with his Dribble Cabrera penciled in there is spoken for. First base is kind of spoken for. Um, the bodies are there. We're just not sure which one's going to end up on the on the diamond on opening day. Well, whether it be Adrian Gonzalez or Dom Smith. Uh, but when you look a little bit more closely at the outfield situation, I, I think we need to throw Jay Bruce's name in the first base slot. Um, with with Juan Lagares having tweaked his swing and worked with the same guy that reinvented J.D. Martinez um, and Juan Lagares being ready to sort of take the, the bull by the horns uh, this spring training with Brandon Nimmo being as highly valued as the Mets value him with Ioannis Cespedes in left field and with the returning Michael Conforto in let's say May 1st uh, the Mets are going to have five outfielders to try to shuffle around and that's why I don't know that I don't know that we're going to see very much of Jay Bruce in right field Unless, of course, the season gets started and both Lagares and Nimmo are struggling mightily to do anything uh, offensively. Uh, that will change the story completely. But if either of them are hitting, it makes for me, it makes the most sense to have Bruce be the everyday first baseman for this team. And that sort of brings back uh, uh, the question, the same question I asked a year ago. Was Jay Bruce the right fit and the right choice as the outfielder that the Mets ended up signing when, when they did, you know, a month or so ago. Um, I think the fact that Bruce does play first base is a, certainly a big factor in that. Um, so there's some insurance all around. You know, you have Bruce who can play first if need be. 
basically that's the best case scenario because if Bruce is playing first base, it means that Nimmo and or Ligaris are hitting and hitting well enough to warrant that starting position in center field, which also then means that Michael Conforto would be the everyday right fielder for the team. Uh, it's an athletic looking outfield with Conforto and either Ligaris and Nimmo in center uh, and Conforto in right. Uh, and Cespedes, provided his legs are in good shape, is a very good defensive outfielder as well when he wants to be. So uh, I'm interested to see how this is going to shake out. It's going to depend a lot on how these guys perform in spring training. Um, but I, I think, if nothing else, the writing is on the wall. And this is not a bad thing, what I'm about to say, but the writing is on the wall for Dom Smith. And I think he should be ready to spend the majority of this coming season in AAA. And again, it's not the worst thing in the world. There's no reason to rush Smith up to the major league level. He got a taste last year. Um, he underwhelmed as far as the batting average was concerned. But he, he now knows what he has to work on. He has that four to five weeks of major league service time under his belt where he has some experience and now he knows what he needs to focus on to improve his game and make himself a better player. The kind of player who can be the everyday first baseman for this team. Uh, finally, I want to touch a little bit on the starting rotation because I think that's the, again, low battery notice. Uh, I think that is the, the last piece that needs to be dusted up a little bit or dusted off a little bit or polished up a little bit. Um, and I expect the Mets to acquire um, not one of the frontline back-end rotation guys. That would be Lance Lynn or uh, Alex Cobb. I don't see Sandy Alderson giving out a three-year contract to either of those two guys. What I do see, what I do foresee, and what I do expect, is that Sandy's going to end up giving out a one-year deal to a guy like Jason Vargas. And Jason Vargas is the one that intrigues me the most, if for no other reason than that he'll be reunited with the guy who made him into the pitcher that he is today, and that's Dave Island, the Mets' new pitching coach. So my next move, if I were the Mets, and the one that I think they're going to make, is Jason Vargas on a one-year contract. Um, I don't think it will be a minor league contract. It will be a, a major league contract. And we'll see Jason Vargas, who can go give 200 innings, provided he's healthy, um, and really fill out the, the, the rotation, um, allowing Mickey Callaway to play around with a six-man rotation as needed, um, allowing Mickey Callaway a chance to look at a guy like Zach Wheeler, who, by the way, if you haven't seen him, looks an awful lot like Dallas Keuchel with his beard. Um, but it allows, it allows Callaway to throw a guy like Wheeler in the bullpen. Maybe make him a, a closer. Um, not that differently from uh, the way Wade Davis was reinvented as a closer a few years back. So what do you guys think about all of this? Are you happy? Are you ready? Uh, it, are, are the Mets ready to start this season? Are they an 81-win team? Lots of questions, and I'm going to talk more about those this week. But uh, until then, I'm going to wrap it up for today. I thank you for watching. I apologize again for being away for over a week, but I'll be here for the next several days. We'll be talking a lot as spring training kicks off. So until the next time we chat, again, thanks for watching. And as always, let's go Mets.